it's another wonderful and blessed evening for all of us, especially that we all know that it's again another time that we can worship the Lord together as a family. We all believe that times of refreshing comes from a time that we spend with the Lord. And this will be another time of refreshing, refresh our souls, to refresh our tired minds and hearts with all the worries that we have. We can always find refreshing in the presence of God. Amen. So tonight, let's start our worship, our time with the Lord, singing this song, Times of Refreshing. May this be every heart's desire to be in the presence of God. to hear 
listen to what you want us to understand this time. We are not sure of the things around us. But Lord, we believe having you as our God gives us assurance. You are the great God, the great man. You know everything that's happening. You see us. You see every heart. You know what we feel. And tonight, Lord, we just want to declare that you are the center of our lives. And that you will always be the center of everything that we will do. bless this desire. We want to focus on your own. Focus on the May you be the center of our lives, of our homes, of our families, our church. We may not be able to come together as a congregation, but we are your church.
Jesus be the center when it's all about Is it so Welcome to our Power Connect. Power Connect is connecting to the source of true power, true prayer. As Christians, we believe that in our prayer, we have God who is the source of the ultimate power, listens to the prayer of His people. And every time we have our prayer time, we are connecting ourselves and aligning our prayers with the power of God. And today, in spite of all the news and all the things that are going on around us, God has given us that assurance and that hope that 
even as we see and experience all of these alarming events, we still have that connection with God through prayer. Recently, there's another news that a Wuhan-like uh, spreading of the virus is happening in Beijing. Some people are saying, is this another wave that China will be experiencing? And I believe that it's not only in China, but there are also some places that the numbers of the infected have not gone down. It's either it's maintaining or some of them are increasing. Now, this is our great concern today. The COVID-19 virus has become the reason that many of us cannot do what we used to do. We cannot go to the places that we used to go. We cannot do things and enjoy things that we used to enjoy. Families cannot go to the beach to, to relax and to play. Children are not allowed to go and play in the playground and other amusement parks. Even the, the, the dinner or the family time that we usually have, we cannot do it right now because of the, the threat of COVID-19. So how can we experience or how can we see the power of prayer in our life? How can we gain that power? When we look at Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 12, it says, Then shall you call on me, and you shall go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. This is the word of God. God said, when you call on me, when you go and pray to me, I will listen to you. God is straightforward in telling us that as long as we are genuinely calling out to him in prayer, he will accomplish everything that we ask for. Indeed, the Bible records many stories that reminds us, that illustrates the situations that he turned, he turned that seemingly problematic situation and became better for the people of God. For example, when God gave the revelation to Noah and let him make an ark, though Noah never saw what an ark looks like, he doesn't have any pattern. Wala siyang pattern, wala siyang guide kung ano yung ark. He has no idea kung ano yung barko. But because of his genuine faith in the Lord, because of his belief that as long as he would sincerely pray to God, God miraculously allowed him to build this big ark under God's guidance and under God's instruction through his enlightenment. And when the world was destroyed by the flood, his family of eight were the only ones who survived. And God allowed that to happen. God allowed that, that this handful of men and women will be saved because of that prayer, because of that genuine connection with God. Another story that we can see is when Joshua led the people of Israel to attack Jericho. The number that they have was seemingly impossible for them to conquer a fortified city. A city that was surrounded with this great wall. But because of their constant and genuine prayer to the Lord, because Joshua and his men obeyed God in his instruction, they were able to to conquer the city, and it was God who moved the ground, who crumbled the wall, and they were able to enter and capture the city. Even in times that a group of people or nation has sinned against God, wonderful thing about God is that if a people, a nation, a country, or whatever group it may be, when they come to God in repentance, when they pray sincerely for God's forgiveness, God will listen. Look at the account of Nineveh. God already sent Jonah 
to proclaim the destruction of this city. He proclaimed in the streets that if you will not repent, God will destroy you. And because of God's word, because of that fear of the Lord that they have, because they recognize that God is above all things, they confess as a nation. They confess from their sins and turn from their evil ways. And because of that, God heard them. Now, there are some people today who would say that this COVID-19 is the result of our sins. It may be so, it may be not. Regardless of God's intention, why He allowed this, one thing is for sure. That when we pray genuinely, if our connection to God is strong, is stable, and our prayers are sincere, I believe that God will hear our prayers. Now, when we look at the things going on around us, it's very easy for us to see the working of God in all of this. As we look at the Bible, there are times that, like you and me, there are times that people may plot against you, against me. But we don't need to lose heart. All we need to do is trust God because God can turn that, that situation. God can turn whatever evil intention people may have against you and turn it into your favor. When we look at the life and we look at the story of Esther, we see there that there was a plot against them. There was this plan to remove and destroy all of them. It was a plan to annihilate the whole tribe of Israel. But when they prayed to God, when they come to God, God heard their prayers and helped them be spared from that catastrophe. Now, if you are in a situation that people are plotting against you or people are trying to get what should be yours, then take heed. Take heed of the promise of God. When you call upon Him with a sincere heart, with a genuine intention, God will listen to you. God will listen to the prayers of His people. All of the messages that we can read from the Bible is also God's message for us today. That as Christians, regardless of whether it is in our life, our work, or when we encounter other things, as long as we are sincerely praying to God and learn to rely on Him, He will surely listen to our prayers and resolve the difficulties we face. And thus, we allow, He allows us to feel His real presence. So one way of experiencing that great power is to recognize the power of God in our life, that He is working and that He is moving. Another thing is that we can gain this power in prayer by acknowledging that God is our help at all times. God is our help at all times. The reflections that we have from God's word reminds us that prayer is one of the ways in which man cooperates with God. Prayer is our cooperation. When we come to God in prayer, we are saying, Lord, I'm here. What do you want me to do? Lord, I'm here in spite of all this crisis in, in our life. What do you need me to do? It is a means by which we call upon God and it is the process by which man is touched by the Spirit of God. So as we commit our lives to God and recognize that God has something that He wants us to do, it is also in, in a way of cooperating that He touches our spirit and that our spirit are one with Him. Being someone who believes in God, and the more we pray, the more we are touched by God. And the more we pray, the more we can see the greater resolution or the greater enlightenment from God. The more we begin to understand, the more we begin to see, 
the more we begin to, to feel that these things that are happening are all falling under the plans and purposes of God. Prayer is not a case of going through formalities. Let us avoid po yung understanding that when we come to prayer, when we attend the Power Connect, we are just going through formalities or following a procedure or reciting words to God. No, prayer is not like that. Because when we begin to pray as if prayer is just a form of formalities or following a procedure or reciting words, then we are just pouting. We are just copying others. Because in prayer, we must give our heart to God, sharing the words of our heart to Him so that we may be able to, to be touched by God. Unless we speak to God from the heart, God cannot touch you and me. And only by praying amidst God's word will we be able to receive more enlightenment from Him. A true prayer, a true prayer is showing by having a heart that yearns for the requirements made by God. It is being willing to fulfill these requirements. It is the willingness to obey God's expectation. And we will be able, we will be able to love what God loves and we will also hate what God hates. And upon the basis which we have this knowledge, we will know and we will be certain and there will be clarity about the truth that is explained by the Word of God. God's Word tells us that prayer is a kind of exchange between us and God. And that it is one of the ways for us to touch the Spirit of God. And that is why we must pray with a true heart and speak to God from our heart. This is the only way God will listen to us. And He will be able to obtain, and we will be able, I mean, to obtain the power of prayer. And, and prayer must be based on the foundation of God's Word. There is no other foundation, there is no other basis when it comes to power in prayer but the Word of God. Only by seeking God's will according to His Word can we receive His enlightenment and see His wondrous works. And what's more is that we should have true faith in God and believe that God rules over everything and that nothing is impossible with God. You know this statement that nothing is impossible with God is being challenged by the devil. And the devil wants us to think that this is not true. The devil wants us to think that there are things that God cannot do. But in reality, there is nothing that is impossible with God. In fact, everything that is happening happens because God allowed them. Without the permission of God, nothing in this world will happen. So in other words, when we say that nothing is impossible with God, nothing that, is, that was possible would never happen if God did not allow it. So even in our life, the things that are seemingly impossible becomes possible because God permits it. However, if we treat prayer as our rules to be followed, not just moving your lips, just saying those words without having those words coming from our hearts, if we just feel that praying is holding us up, that saying few prayers carelessly sometimes is, is something that we already call prayer, then uh, these are the times that we are wrong. Because prayer is not just saying words. It's not just like, you know, dictating what we want God to do. Prayer is our connection with God. And this is a connection with a relationship. It is relational. When a person begins to pray without that relationship, 
then that is not prayer at all. In fact, a person who prays without a relationship with God simply means that that person is still under the domain and the authority and power of the devil. Because power in prayer happens when we have that relationship with God. As long as we act according to God's instruction, then we will be able to build a normal relationship with God and we will earn His guidance. For instance, when we look at the life of Joshua, he met difficulties. But God used words to personally tell him how to cooperate with him to get through that difficulty. Joshua acted accordingly to the requirements of God and he genuinely prayed and relied on God. In fact, there were many times that he said, Lord, I cannot do this, but God say, said to him, Take courage, Joshua, take courage. And finally, God saw the faith and obedience in him and of the Israelites. And he allowed Joshua to conquer Jericho and even to cross towards the promised land. We can see from that that as long as we are sincere in our prayers to God, with an honest attitude telling God, of our deficiencies and difficulties, God will grant us faith and strength and guide us forward. Just as Jesus said in John 4.24, God is spirit and they that worship him in spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And as we worship God in spirit and in truth, we should also pray about how to attain God's praise. Prayer is really the most important thing for the believers. So what we should pray about to gain God's approval? What are the things that we need to pray? And there's a passage in the Bible that I will be reading to remind us what we should pray to attain His approval. And what about the contents of prayer? We should pray step by step in accordance to our true state, that which it is by only done by the Holy Spirit. So the Bible tells us that prayer can only be done by the aid of the Holy Spirit. And you and we should commune with God in keeping God's will and requirements for us. Just like his declaration, O oh God, I wish to fulfill my duty in order that you may be glorified in us and may enjoy the testimony in us. And this should be our prayer, that God will be glorified in us and that he will be satisfied and glorified we realize from god's word that not all of our prayers will be heard by god and that if their contents is after god's will and something to be made perfect by god then god will fulfill our prayers but if our prayers are simply you know selfish yung para lang sa atin when we pray, we need to be mindful. Ano ba yung hinihingi natin sa Panginoon? Are we truly asking God of prayers that will glorify Him? Or are we simply asking God to listen to our prayers? To, to, to show favor upon us? Prayer is not twisting the arms of God. It's not seeking that he will just approve what we want without having those prayers being under the will and the purpose of God. If our prayers are making simple, simply demands of God and unreasonably asking God for His grace and blessing, or if in our hearts we are reluctant to pray to God but follow the rules and give some empty praises, such prayers are not in accordance to the will of God. 
So therefore, brothers and sisters, God wants to listen to us. He wants to take heed of our prayers. But God will not listen to us and our faith if we are not praying in the Spirit. If we are not praying in that relationship. If we are not praying with the intention that that prayer will give God the glory and the praise. To the fellowship that we have with God. We must understand that as long as we pray to God in all things, according to His intentions, then we will surely obtain the work of the Holy Spirit and gain the power of prayer. Remember that God is omnipotent. God is all-knowing. God has all the power. And not, there's nothing that He cannot do. But if our prayers are not centered on Him, if our prayers are not in line with His will, He will not do it. He will not listen to it. Because obtaining the power of God is to be in the Spirit, in relationship with Him, and praying that our prayers will bring Him glory, honor, and praise. Tonight, as we continue with our prayer time, join me as we intercede for the world. Join, let us join our hearts as we pray for the need of healing for the world. Let us pray for those who are struggling, especially during these days because of the crisis that we are experiencing, financial, there are crises emotional, there are crises physical. And there was even a news that because a mother could not go home with the lack of resources and not feeling well, she wasn't able to go home and she died on the road, but her intention was to go back to her children. There are many stories that would break our hearts, but this is the time for us to pray and to receive the power of prayer. So let us come to God and let us commit all of our worries, all of our concerns to our God who is powerful, who is mighty, and who has given us this opportunity to have that wonderful relationship with Him. And because of that, the Word of God says He will listen to us. So as we pray tonight, let us pray with a conviction that our Heavenly Father is listening to us right now. Let us pray. Father, we know that prayer is necessary for the life of believers. We know that prayer is our way not only of communicating with you, but it is also our way of receiving your power. Prayer, faith, confidence that can move mountains. That power, Lord, is not innate in us, but that power comes from you. You are the one who allows us to experience that power. You are the one who reminds us that we are weak, but you are strong. You are the one who reminds us that everything that we cannot do, nothing is impossible with you. You are the one who reminds us by your word that if we believe, if we pray and ask and seek your face, you will listen. Father, tonight as we pray together, we pray, Lord, that you will hasten the the cure or the vaccine that the world needs to address this COVID-19 pandemic. Lord, we know that what pleases you, you will always do. 
but as your people, this is our prayer. And we know that when our prayers are heard, you will be glorified. The world will realize that no amount of scientific advancement, no amount of human ingenuity can save us from a virus that we cannot even see. But the world will know that through prayer and our faith in our God who is powerful and that you alone can remove this virus from the face of the earth, then people will glorify your name. So Father, we pray on behalf of the all of humanity. We are struggling in dealing with life. We are struggling in living each day because of the threat of this COVID-19. But we don't lose hope. He said, we pray and we trust you more because you alone can heal us. You alone can provide the remedy. You alone can remove the virus completely. Whatever your way may be, O oh Lord, we are here to pray and intercede for the world. As a church and as your people, you have called us to become people of peace. And we pray, O oh God, that there will be peace in this world, that there will be, that your peace will be upon the lives of the people. Not the peace that the world offers, but the peace that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. So Father, as we continue with Continue on with our Christian life. May we grow deeper in knowledge and understanding. And may the inner core of the peace that we have in Christ will finally show forth. That regardless how chaotic the world may be, your children will always live with a peace that transcends all understanding. The peace that not only gives us calmness, but the peace that gives us wisdom in all situations and that can keep us quiet in times of chaos. This is the peace that we are praying for. And Father God, we continue to pray that as we seek and ask for the power of prayer, may we as your people be faithful to your word because the power of prayer comes through the word that you have given us. So teach us, Lord, to seek your face, to know your will, and to read your word, and to delight in reading your word. And Lord, at this very moment, we also pray that you will minister to every one of us. Minister, Lord, for the loneliness that some people are experiencing, that they will experience your presence so that that loneliness will be replaced with the knowledge that we have our Heavenly Father always with us. We pray for those who are physically struggling, maybe they are sick or they are not feeling well. Lord, this is a time that we don't want to go to the hospital. This is the time that if possible, we want to avoid any contact outside of our homes. But if there are those who are not feeling well, we pray that in the name of Jesus, by the covering of your blood, touch their bodies today. Nothing is impossible with you, O oh God. And that is our prayer and we claim your promise. It may be a flu or fever or stomach ache or whatever pain it may be. We pray that by the blood of Jesus, the blood that cleanses all our sins is also the blood who can heal all our diseases. 
We also pray, Father God, for those who are struggling financially. Struggling in maintaining their businesses afloat. Struggling with the closure of some companies and unemployment. Lord, may you show forth your glory upon their lives. Show them, Father God, that only you has the power to provide their every need. Even if the world seems to be lacking of everything. Teach us, Father, to seek your will. Because your word says that seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. The things of this world is only the result of our faithfulness to you. Father, may you find us faithful in spite of the financial struggle that we have, the economic situation that our world has. And Father, we also pray that those who are struggling emotionally will be comforted by your spirit, will be uplifted by your word. We have heard of many stories of God that people, people are losing hope in this pandemic, in this COVID-19. People are losing hope because it seems like nothing is working in their lives. Heavenly Father, May you visit them today. And may you reassure them that your love, that your mercy and grace will sustain them. That we can overcome this crisis, this pandemic. All we need to do is hold on to you. Keep our faith in you. And believe that you are powerful above all else. Lord, even as we continue to commit our families to you. We remember our loved ones who are far from us. We remember our friends, our church mates, our care group members, everybody, Lord, that has connection with our lives. We, we call upon you, Lord, to minister to them in their times of needs. And Lord, we pray that the fellowship that we have as believers, even if we cannot meet together as a church, will continue because we are united by your Spirit. So Father, minister to all of us. And we continue, Lord, to ask for your heavenly blessing to address our every need. We may have different needs. We may have different situations. We may have different degrees of difficulty. But there is always one thing that we all have. We all have our Heavenly Father who is almighty, who is all powerful, who has all the resources that we need, not only to survive, but to live under the guidance and light of the Spirit. We have the Lord Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior, who will not only save us from our sin, but will also save us from all the attempts, all the plans, all the schemes of the evil one, that we may be able to live a life that is victorious in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you for hearing our prayers. We believe that you are here with us today, listening to the prayers of your people. And may you receive the glory, the honor, and the praise, as all of our requests will be answered in your perfect time. We and the rest of all humanity will know that only you can resolve all of our troubles, all of the conflicts, all of the concerns that we have. And Father, minister to us, visit every home, visit every heart, comfort every soul who longs after you, that we may experience 
the true power of prayer. This is our united prayer and we commit all things in Jesus' mighty name. I hope and pray, brothers and sisters, that in our prayer time, in our time with the Lord, we are growing closer and closer to Him. Our relationship is becoming deeper and deeper with Him, and our love will become stronger. Let us continue to serve God, and let us continue to see the power of God to pray. May God bless you. Evening. Take care, and I hope that we will see you soon. God bless.